And welcome to the Real Estate Rundown. We were just talking about how it's been kind of a quiet, interesting week in the world of real estate. Uh, chirp, 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 chirp. Typically, <laughs> September is a little bit slower, a little bit slower for all things in, in the asset world, real estate, stocks. Uh, NVIDIA had a <clears> major <throat> dip yesterday. We were talking about that too. But the thing that's on my mind and... I know I shared this with you guys last week because I am floored by this, but the plaintiff, the lead plaintiff in the Sitzer Burnett case, this is this is the case, Sitzer Burnett versus NAR. This is the case that ultimately changed all of the commission rules. Yep. This is the case that got the 400 and something million dollar settlement against NAR. Um, and essentially this guy, Josh Sitzer, he co-founded a real estate technology startup called Landian. And Landian allows buyers... Um, to go on there, upload a listing, and get a buyer's agent to show them a property for only $49. Um, there's a package service where you can buy a few showings, buy a couple offer rights for like $1,700. Bucks. And that's been like overplayed so much by this point. Like you've probably heard of this. If you haven't, I was outraged when I did. But here's what I want to talk about. So he co-founded this company with a guy. And the guy he co-founded this company with exited a financial technology company for potentially like it's an undisclosed amount was the exit but the company that acquired his company went out and raised 600 million dollars hmm. so in order to acquire so how did he make that so connection? he possibly got nine figures plus so how do you how, yes. how did sitzer how was how did he make that connection where do you know this person exactly like and were they in were they involved in the lawsuit where there is smoke there is fire exactly or was this um, was this a setup as, exactly was it a chess move it's like hey you know we want you to be the the mouthpiece for this lawsuit or this not the mouthpiece but basically the the face of it for they but so okay, okay well so it wasn't hard to discover right like i mean a, if there's any type of that if there's but like what a, are the a chances mastermind, this guy, I mean, nobody this is guy, talking about this. This guy, nobody I, I is know, talking about this. What I'm this. saying is, is if there, this if is somebody a two hundred thousand dollar house that he sued off of. Yeah. Yes. This is like he's not like some big tech guy. This guy, no. he he bought a two hundred thousand dollar house, sold sold a two hundred thousand dollar house and paid commission, and that's how right. this lawsuit came about. And then this lawsuit comes comes to fruition, finishes, and now all of a sudden he's a tech founder with a hundreds of millions of dollars of, mm -hmm. of like where did he get all this yes like, where, where did he get all this clout to, and and who was involved well, didn't in he, this he pulled lawsuit. out of the lawsuit too right who was yes. really involved in the lawsuit mm -hmm. that's the other thing too is, is the strings is, puppet show yes it feels like yeah, this, a geppetto this, this sitzer guy <laughs> he's he was a nobody yes and then he became a huge somebody in this lawsuit Yes, and then now he's a tech founder <coughs> and of now a he's, billion, he's a, he's a of a real mind. estate startup aimed at replacing what he tried to eradicate, which was the buyer agent commission. Yeah, it's fishy to me. It is so fishy. It's very fishy. It what sounds I find like is corruption. Funny, though, is even just like their whole monetization schedule on it, like seventeen hundred dollars to show five properties and. Or I think it's like seventeen ninety nine, right? To show five properties and write a contract. So his co founder, yep. his co founder, who is the, his co founder? What's so his, his co founder is I've got his name. Hold on. Of Landian. Yes. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Landian, so his, Land Guardian. So his car, his co founder, Bryce Galen. And Neil Batra? Yes, but Bryce Galen is the one who, who founded, he, he previously had founded a property, or I'm sorry, a financial technology company, and he exited. Now, this company was called Zero, and Zero was acquired by Avent. Zero. And if you, if you really dig into it, what you'll learn is that in order for Avent to acquire Zero, they raised $600 uh, million. Dollars. I wow. A Avent. They're big. I, I'm telling you, so, something. there is something here. It is so because fishy. Because this guy was a nobody. Yeah. <clears throat> he, I mean, it's like a dude, not, it's not like a nobody. A... I'm not saying that to be... But Sorry, he, Mr. He, Sister, he sold we don't a, mean... He we... sold a $200,000 house. Right. It's not like he was a, a multimillionaire and goes, you know what, I, I'm going to sue this, sue this, you know, NAR and all right. this because of this is, this is um, you know, bad. But he... 
it seems yeah, like it was almost a plotted like there plan. was somebody behind him. Well, we've been saying that. Like, we have said that on so many podcasts. Like, yeah. who's behind this? And, well, here and, like, it is. I was thinking it was, like, venture capital because you look at the venture capital investing in real estate and it just, like, bam, like, right when Sitzer Burnett was filed, So right? where did the $600 million in equity come from? That's that's who's behind it. I, well, who of knows? Of who knows? Like I mean, they, obviously, where the money... Who knows if it was an opportunity. Like, this dude gets a massive exit. He sees another angle. He sees a platform play. He sees the opportunity. I mean, we all talk about how big the, the residential need... real estate commission nut is. Like, it's freaking massive. Elliot knows the yeah, number. What is it? Yeah, it's $100 billion. Why would he need Every Sitzer? year. Every year, yeah. It's and I've seen estimates billion. that it's $2 trillion. The, the, Every year. The, 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 the commission... No, oh, sorry. No, not the commission. You're talking about the sales. The sales. Yes, so $100 billion <laughs> in commission. I was like, good luck. <laughs> Every year. Where is that? <laughs> yeah. So who's a Sitzer? I mean, who, who is, yeah. What, what was what, what did Sitzer do before? What, was he like a, an attorney? No clue. Was he some, well, yeah, what no, was no. his trade so before? So the story that goes, story goes is he sells his house. After he sells his house, he ends up talking to his neighbor. Not clear if it's the neighbor that he lived next to or the neighbor that he lived in after he moved Anyway, he's talking to his neighbor who happens to be an attorney and he's telling his his neighbor, oh, I had to pay for the buyer's agent in order to sell my house. And the neighbor's like familiar with antitrust. And that is how it all got started. Supposedly. Yeah, that's the story. That's the narrative that they or, ran in TechCrunch, mind you. TechCrunch yeah. broke this news. Like yeah. TechCrunch knew about this before, like before Housing Wire, before Inman, before any of us influencers picked wild. up on it. It is wild. Like, there's something here, I'm telling you. Yep. Like, this wild. is <clears throat> so sus. Where there's yeah. smoke, there's fire. That's what you said, right? It yeah, so I'm sus. just, I'm reading some of these 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 quotes that are in here. Um, basically, that, like, how Zillow and Redfin are not incentivized to change their, their old model. And, you know, my bet is that following the NAR settlement, most agents will convert from relying solely on traditional models based on speculation and higher fees incorporating the Landian flat fee model, he said. So did so maybe he was um, like a puppet and he That's they, they were totally like, hey, if, going if, if you do this, then what we can do is we'll hook you up at the end of this. Uh, that's that's what it sounds like. We'll hook you up with a with to be a to be, to be a founder <clears throat> of this big giant friggin tech or tech company that'll get $600 million or what, how much did they raise? So did no, no, no. So, 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 Oh no, that, that Galen, was a sale. Galen gotcha. co-founded it, So Galen had started a property technology company. Yeah. So why did Galen want Sitzer? Exactly. So Gar- Galen yeah. exits this financial technology company, the company that he exited that acquired him raised 600 million yes, in order to acquire them. Yeah, but, but we don't know. No, how, we, don't we don't know how, how much he was acquired. Well, so, because, so because Sitzer was his use case, right? That was his use case scenario for him to build, uh, for him to build this, this model and build this proof of concept. <laughs> so he could, we could be <laughs> grasping at so many stars. I don't think Keith, so. Keith, what do you think? <clears throat> yeah. 1799. There it is. Yeah. I mean, I, I most of the time, the, the truth is stranger than fiction. So <laughs> well it wouldn't surprise me if, if you, you know, everything we're saying has some merit to it, right? You go down. That's the thing. A lot of people don't go down the rabbit hole. You know, they'll just stay very surfacey and and it, and probably because the, the lawsuit is big enough and cause so much stir around the industry. They're not looking behind the curtain, so to speak, no. to see, well, yeah, what's all these other transactions going on that's affecting the real estate industry now that maybe we aren't seeing or could potentially affect it even more, all these massive transactions. So either it's just massively coincidental, which is possible, right? No it's, way. A, a lawsuit no way. happened and you have these people that just can see something and boom, take advantage of opportunity. What it, what it's or make? this is a, a super thought out, nothing. well Yeah, he made nothing. Game. So he, so he was, happening. so he's yeah. one of the hated, most hated per- persons by real estate agents. And probably <clears> I'm <throat> sure, I'm sure the NAR was probably digging up all sorts of crap on him, trying to find something from about him. So, well, he withdrew like, himself as a plaintiff yeah. after class action status. So maybe, which is that also was part of the deal. Like, hey, yeah. Why, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you stay the course? Yeah. yeah. His attorneys made hundreds of millions of dollars and he made zero. Yeah. He was just like, Hey, we got you. We, and he was taken care of. He was the. The, the name on this on this lawsuit? Yeah. 
There's got to be there. Yeah, there's something. There is there. something. You don't. You don't just all of a sudden. Hey, I'm gonna be part of this lawsuit. I'm gonna. I'm gonna fight I'm gonna this. And then I know. Bail. I was always. And then all of a sudden, by that too. I'm a part you know, of this I'm massive of this opportunity. Ma- this, this tech company that. Okay, like, but but <laughs> but then okay. So actually, like I had posted a reel on my Instagram, and like I was kind of getting into it with somebody. Somebody <clears throat> was like kind of mad at me for giving oh, wow. Landy and free publicity. They think they're oh. like, oh well, now all you realtors are out there talking about it, giving giving this company free publicity. Uh. In any event, in light of that, though, like, will buyer's agents even go work for this company? Like, who's going to be That's like, what yeah, he's saying here, I'll that be a he's buyer's gonna, agent They're going to be hurting. Yeah. They're going to no, be hurting and need to, and need to go use services and companies like Landian to open because up they'll door source it. Bucks. Exactly. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and then how are they going to get buyers to pay for that? I mean, the, the most buyers don't want to, they're not going to, hey, here's, here's a th- Here's a thousand dollars so I can go see five houses. Like, well, and not only that, like, just think about it. I mean, that would be my mindset. (laughs) (laughs) Not that I want to belittle what's being done, but like, that's the part of that I see being an issue is like, you want to go and you want to tour some properties and they're going to charge you $50 to go look at every single house. Well, I guess that's the other thing to think about too. You know, if, if they're saying they created this business model to help, negate from buyers quote unquote spending more money or being charged um well i mean does it that's just another way that they see to monetize um, absolutely in the industry so what is it really solving yeah and how many times have you worked with a buyer and you've shown them more than five houses or written more than two oh, offers another thousand bucks right exactly <laughs> like you that's know what i'm saying a lot of agents if they could if they could monetize mm-hmm. like this they'd love it i know fifty dollars every house Oh, yeah. you want to show 50 houses tomorrow? Cool. Sounds good to me. You want to go back for a third showing? All Sounds right. Good to let's me. go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, since it's the same house, then it's only 25, not 50. Oh, oh you get a kidding. discount. <laughs> <laughs> Bundle and save. Now, uh, really interesting. Uh, something else that I wanted to share because I find, find this to be pretty fascinating is like the consumer has no idea what's really mm. going on in a lot of these circumstances with commissions, with these online portals. So, 1000 Watt did a survey. Uh, they surveyed 1000 buyers. Buyers, and they asked them, were you aware that many real estate agent websites and apps take up to 40% of the money you pay for an agent you find and hire through their site slash app? And 76% of these buyers said, no, I was not aware of this. Only 24% said, yes, I was aware of this. And then they asked a follow-up question. What do you think about this practice? And 15% said, I don't have a problem with it. 40% though said, I think this is deceptive and have a problem with it. And 45% of them said, I am probably fine with this, but they should make that clear upon sign up. Yeah, Zillow so. should say, yeah, they should. hey, we take 40% of this. When, they, we, when we give you, we, we're going to hand this off to an agent and we're going to take 40% of their commission. Yeah, why aren't they required to disclose? They need to. Yeah, it's definitely. I think all the they lawsuit. might. There may lawsuit be some. I agree. Zillow, they should. And all the sites, they need to put. They, <laughs> they need to put how much money they're taking let's, from the agent. Let's yeah. not call for a well, lawsuit against Zillow. Here's the thing, but. too. <laughs> yeah. For all we know, they they could, right? Did they, it's is it their problem? And if the they TOS. do, that the consumer didn't read the fine print. They do. That's true. Yeah. said, yeah, in, in the TOS when they yeah, check the box. But it's not. It's not in the term. It's not in the TOS though. Gotcha. I I mean, well. It's not. I, I guess I'm not be. sure. Does it? They're selling. They're selling their information to an agent. But does or, do they have to disclose that? Of course they do. Well, I know that with the new TCPA laws that are coming down in January, I believe is when they go into effect. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that <clears throat> you, if you get an online lead and you pass it to someone, so like so Zilla gets an online lead, they're going to have to disclose to that lead who they're passing it to. At, at that moment, like they can't take the lead in and then pass it to somebody later. They have to disclose it up front. Yeah, because like realtor.com. And they're only allowed to give to it to send, one person. Send it to multiple people. Yep. That practice is done. It's done. No longer. Do anymore. Yep. No longer is that <clears throat> happening. Which, I mean, I, I understand because consumers get like five different phone calls from five different real estate agents. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it's, it's annoying. It's frustrating. And then, You're like, yeah, you what talk the heck? To Why, like, what, did I, what did I do? <laughs> Tell yeah, me what I did we, so I can undo it. <laughs> yeah, it's, I remember deal, having to deal with that a lot back in the day, especially with, um, like, um, Elliot got into Dave Ramsey and, and, and got into that whole network and was able to get leads. ELPs? The amount, local like, providers. when you call a consumer, you're like, okay, cool, who, who am I going to battle this time? You know, is this, you, it, was, it got exhausting because of how <laughs> many of, uh, different people that they would send it to, so... Yep. So people would get like upset with you. Yeah, they'd send it to multiple. Well, ELPs. well not necessarily because I think it was a different 
breed of of lead because mm. it was coming from such a tight network mm -hmm. but meaning my my our mindset as an agent you know i was just like oh is this dude the same dude gonna get it you know, a lot of times you're in a battling against the, the same person in the same area depending on the zip code but it was annoying i guess as long yes. as I'm getting at well and, and when you think about the consumer right like there's a lot of lead services now <clears> that it gets it leads are expensive and it gets sent out to three or four or five other agents, you have to be a dog on a bone or a dog on a steak in that situation, right? Like you have to call them hard and fast in order to to get, to grab that mind share first. And that's not always the best way to make the, the, the best impression, right? Where, hey, Kayla, it's Elliot. Hey, I, da, 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 da. you don't answer. Hey, Kayla, right? And it's just that kind of certainty that wins in that situation. Oh my and gosh. I think that that's where it gives that used car salesman it's the it's the ten yeah. days of pain. It is the we, ten days of pain. We all remember ten that. Days of pain. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's real. We will stalk you. We will text you. We yep. will call thank, you. We will thank Facebook, you, thank Instagram. Thank you, Ben Kenny. That's a that's a Ben Drop Kenny. A that's a, that's a Ben Kenny house. program. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ding dong, did ya? Did you leave the package? <laughs> oh my gosh! Remember the monsters? Hopefully they don't answer. <laughs> that was a, that was a really cool a really cool program that we did. Uh, in the monster package. Like, oh, dude, that pissed a lot of people off though. Okay, let's talk about that because I don't know what you're referring to. What uh, was the monster? Pa I know you want to share it. <coughs> Elliot, Elliot ahead, wants to share it. it. Uh, so it was, it was a system which it, it, it totally made sense. But um, so you would you would drop a, a, a what looked exactly like a shipping label, like whether it be U, 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 USPS, FedEx, you know UPS, mm. that essentially said like, "Hey, I have a package for you. Please give me a call at this number." And then people would call you and you would be dropping off, you know, some type of real estate package. And but you, didn't, you didn't tell them that when they called. Oh, you my like, oh gosh. we have a package to deliver. And people, well, what is it? Like, what time are you going to be home? Yeah, I'll swing like, by well, with it. I don't know all the contents of the package, but um, my, what I'm trying to do here is to schedule a time that you, you will be home to be able to to uh, accept it so that way you're not going to people's houses and then knocking on doors yeah. and not being able to get in front of them this is gotcha. a this was the the quote-unquote perfect system to be able to get in front of the consumer well, we were working a certain so type of they, lead too you know it was people that were a lot of times late on their mortgage yeah people yeah, people sure. obviously you risk and remembering and not being home but majority of the time it worked but then you got there you know the twist like oh so I see that uh, you're you're you're, you're uh, in ninety days default and have you ever heard of a short sell? Are you currently doing a loan modification with your lender? Hey, I'm curious, what's your plan? Um, you know, if you aren't able to ha stop the property from going to foreclosure, I have a I have a package here I'd like to go over with you today and maybe get you a, a planned exit versus a forced exit. That's right. See, Keith. Oh my gosh, I can tell you've done that a time or two. <laughs> Keith, the way he was the one. You crushed it. You crushed I'm, it with I'm, those. Uh, your scripting was beautiful, by the way, and I'm not laughing at the scripting. I'm laughing at the twist of like <laughs> they're expecting this yeah, package. I, I mean, I don't remember <laughs> that. With, you know, it was somewhere yeah. along those lines. I'm sure I was a little bit better at it than, than I was yeah, right this, now. This that was the more than just a few years ago. <laughs> more than just that a few is years burned ago. into your like neurological pathways. Like wow. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah when you say it, it worked, though. you want you want to get people bet. to call you back, <laughs> right? I mean, versus like just burning up the phones or even door knocking. Right. Dang, that is like so aggressive. I I I was more about like the attracting. No. <laughs> I like the attracting too, but man, that's where so that's I, rem I remember Elliot like talking to people through the freaking door sometimes, like knocking a door or... and they wouldn't open the door. What do you want? And like sometimes I just get aggressive. I'm here because your house is in foreclosure and I want to I want to see if I could talk to you about it. <laughs> yeah, I know. And that literally and you get <laughs> shot through the door. Uh, Elliot. Yeah, oh Elliot gosh, and I definitely Elliot. no question took the hardcore bare knuckle prospecting approach is what we call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We did it a works, little, we did on it expired. Just we just it's, waited until um, it, 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 it foreclosed. Every, here's the thing, right? Like, <laughs> everything works. Got it with it the just depends managers. on how that much. That was smarter. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I, absolutely. It just depends on how much effort you put in. Yep. <clears throat> Anything works. It all works if you work I, it. I like the Darren Hardy approach. You know, you get the direct results of the amount of energy that you put into something. That's right. The pendulum yeah. always swings both ways, whether you feel it or not. I love that quote, and I love that book. Is that compound? Yeah. The compound it's, it's, effect? It's still one of my favorites. Incremental books. moves make monumental results. There's another well, it's one. The, it's the insignificant moment-to-moment -moment choices. Choices, yeah. That, ter that the course of over time with consistency equates to gigantic results. 
He that dude. Love he it. is he's Mike underrated. Br- like he's simple, but also underrated. Brilliant. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Underrated True. brilliant. All right, folks. <coughs> it is an interesting time in real estate. A lot going on. Uh, what do you think of of this Josh Sitzer and him starting this real estate technology startup? I think there is something there. It's sus. I would love to hear what you think. Make sure to drop us a comment. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. We appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in.